Today we are going to be learning about geolocation and not just getting the latitude and longitude with geolocation, although we can do that if you like, but there is also information that comes along with geolocation and that is the heading, which is essentially like a compass in which direction from or how many degrees of north is the person currently at. And it also will tell us the speed at which somebody is is running, which is kind of cool. In Chrome, we can fake coordinates, but we cannot fake heading and we cannot fake speed. So really the only way that I've found to do this so far is with the iOS simulator. And if you don't have a Mac, you might have to sit tight on this one, uh, or you can run it on your phone and then start running down the street to actually test it because you need some real data to get it going. So I've downloaded Xcode here. And if you don't have a Mac, I maybe can do this with Android. I'm not totally sure. Uh, you go to Xcode, open developer tool, and then simulator. And then you can change the hardware from hardware, device, iOS 10. And then you might have to download some of these things first. So I've got to open on an iPhone 7 Plus. Now, the next thing is, just like our last two, you cannot run access to your user's webcam, to the microphone, and now you cannot access their geolocation unless you're on a secure origin. And that hasn't been a problem for us so far because what we've been doing is we did our NPM install here, which will install just that browser syncs, and it will do an NPM start for us. Now, that will give us a local host, which is a secure origin. But because I want to open it up on a different device, we're gonna, it's going to give us a external IP address or internal IP address. Sorry. It'll say HTTPS 192.168.1.107. And that is the address that we need to visit on our devices. Now, browser sync ships with what's called a self signed certificate, which allows you to have HTTPS on your computer. It's still going to throw this really scary warning, but that's because it, it is a self signed certificate and it, it doesn't trust it. So you have to go to advanced and you have to proceed to the local host in order to get that to work. It's still going to cross us out, but that is standard for getting it working on your local computer. So what we want to do is actually copy this HTTPS here, open up your Safari on your simulator here and visit that website. Now it's going to yell at you that this is not a trusted, cannot verify the identity. You want to click on continue there, and then it's going to serve it over in a secure origin. And then we go to our index dash finish to see where we got. Now it's going to ask you, can you access your location? You say, yes, I want to have access to that location. Ask me a second time. Oh, and there we go. So what's happening here is that I've gone to my simulator here. You go to debug location and you can select a number of different jaunts. So this is simulating somebody running, having a bike ride at the Apple campus, walking around, I guess, or a free freeway drive. And it's going to simulate uh, updating the location as well as the actual speed. So that's why we need to use this iOS simulator in here. So that's how that one works. But we want to go back to our index dash start. One other thing you might want to do is to open up Safari. And the beauty of Safari is that you can take Safari, you can go to develop, you can find like this is the phone that I'm using right now, but you can also have your simulator and you can see you can open up dev tools for whatever it is that's currently open on your phone or in the simulator. That's pretty cool. So that's going to be helpful to have uh, that console window open for us just in case we need to see if we have any errors now. So let's go back to our script tags here and let's get going with coding this. First thing we need to do is to select both the arrow, which is this right here, and the kilometers per hour that we are running on. So go to our script tag here. We'll say const arrow equals document.query selector dot arrow. Do the same thing for speed. Now that we have that, we need to listen for the user's position. So we access that on navigator.geolocation. And now there's two ones here. There's watch position and there is get current position. We want watch position because get current position would just give us the one and watch position is going to just watch it over time. And it's just going to give us data as frequently as we need it. The person's not moving around too much. It's going to give us less frequent updates. If the person is 
flying down the highway, it's going to give us a lot more frequent updates. So we have that data that comes in here and it's going to run a function and let's just console log the data to see what we've got and give that a save. It's going to ask the user location and then I'm going to open up my Safari dev tools here and here we go. Look at this. This is data that's streaming in and this is giving us this geo position. I'm going to bump the size up here. Inside of that, we have a timestamp as to when that happened, as well as coordinates for what happened. So here we've got accuracy, and I believe that is number of meters it is accurate to. Uh, we've got heading. This is really good. So that is the number of degrees relative to north that we are. And then we've got the latitude and longitude to where they are. You could put that on a map if you want. And then speed, and that's coming in at kilometers per hour. So if you're some weirdo from the States that uses miles, you got to do the math. But uh, us, the rest of the world will use kilometers. <laughs> now, we've got this data here. And what we simply have to do now is we can update it. So we say speed dot text content equals data dot chords dot speed. Now, when we refresh that sucker, see that we're automatically seeing this. And if you wanted to, you could pop it in a math dot round. And that would just give you 34. I find that it doesn't change very often. So you're not sure if it's working or not. So I, I like to keep the decimal places there just so that we can see exactly how fast they're changing. That's good. Now, what we need to do is rotate this compass right here, which is our arrow depending on where we are. And we simply just take the arrow and we apply the style dot transform. This is just a CSS transform and that's going to be rotate and normally be like 20 degrees. Let's try that. So you see what happened that it rotated at 20 degrees, but we don't want to rotate at 20 degrees. We want to rotate it the data dot chords dot heading. And that is the number of degrees relative of north and it's already 360 base. So you don't have to do any math on that. Give it a save. And now you see that this thing is slightly turning depending on where the person actually currently is in their jog. And it will just tilt itself as we go along. Last thing we need to do here is if someone this right here is called the success callback. So when someone successfully gives you access to it, this will run. But what happens if they say no? Then what we have to do is run a new function here, which is our error. And we'll just console.log or console dot error that error message and then maybe like alert to the user. Hey, you got to allow that to happen. Or whatever it is, and then you have to display instructions to the user on how to re enable it if they've blocked it from happening. So give that a save browser sync. We can switch it around, change our location. Let's go on a run instead. We're going a lot slower and there's a lot more turns in something like that. So that's pretty cool. You can look at the latitude and longitude inside of this data.chords if you like. Maybe if you want to try do a Google map, but this is a framework free series. So there's not too much we could do with the latitude and longitude. Hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll see you tomorrow.